Well, morning all. I'm back from the dead. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It was a more of a 12-hour bug. So where we're going now is I'm going to be checking the valves on this because this engine definitely has a louder tapping noise than the engine I just finished up with. So I've been digging through my parts and I actually found two new stock intake valves, two exhaust valves. I've got a couple new tappets if I need them. And I've got four valve seals. I think I only need two. And the hardest part to find, well, I've got gaskets. That's good. The hardest part to find was the specifications. So the 422-400 series is the specs I want. And the intake clearance is 004 to 006. Exhaust is 007 to 009. We're going to be checking that. But where I found this was interesting. So I was doing an internet search and the, uh, the engines of 422-437-120901. So I actually had to go to Garden Tractor Talk, pull up my post on Hawk 2, and on page, I think we're on eight. Yeah, page eight, I got the common specs. But what I found interesting was I've got the specs on what I measured back in 2017. And I noted that everything's clean, looks to burn even on both sides, very little carbon. And uh, there was something, oh, up here. Not sure if I want to replace valves. I replaced them seven years ago. So that now makes, if that's 17, that now makes it almost. So that was seven years ago plus that. That's 14 years ago. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to find out after an additional seven years what these specs come out to. So stay tuned. Well, I got a couple, three or four decisions to make. So I do need to remove the intake manifold, but do I just want to remove, because I got to remove this linkage right here. It's coiled around. I just want to remove this and then remove the manifold with the carb attached. That's decision one. Or do I want to remove this and the carb and the intake because I do have badges for it and we don't know what this engine's going to go in and it does need some cleanup. So I'm thinking maybe a repaint of the tens and make this one black also. Um, yeah, so yeah, let me think about this, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just remove both the carb all three items here and then we can pull the plugs pull the valve pan uh, valve gasket covers and uh do some measurements and then the limb goes down well i guess while i'm watching the video i'm right gonna go ahead and, and remove this stuff right the way over here so, so we think if we can bend that wire yeah it there, shouldn't take okay. too long that should give us more wire to play with on here and this can be pulled back. okay can so yeah to plan to remove this you have to take the carb off to pull this off it's same thing you got to put this on before you put the carb on and yeah i'm going to have to pull the tins because i dropped the lock washer down in the fin there so i was on the fence about painting them but i guess i ain't anymore all right so at the end of the video i'm into the valves so now i can do some adjustment pretty so it needs it. So because the way these engines are configured, it's kind of hard to find top dead center because the plug hole is sort of the pistons like right here. So you can't really see down in the plug hole. But what you can do is look down that hole right there in the breather 
uh, the valve cover assembly and you can see the bottom of the ro piston rod and what you can do is turn it to where you can you can see it, it it's at top dead center so now I can be able to measure the gap here yeah I need to do a redo on that so that's how you can find top dead center you just watch the bottom of the uh, crank you can tell the pistons all the way up yeah first one got in the way well I really couldn't remember how I was determined on left side and right side so I went back to the computer and I was looking at the images that I took and this is it says left side open so by looking at it we got the exhaust port here and there's the door to the shop so I'm calling this side the left side so now that when I compare measurements I can check them as our as I've got a mark now so we know which sides which well 10 minutes don't you hate it when this happens I just had that feeler gauge in my hand it's not here it's not here it's not at my computer desk Uh huh. Yeah, ten minutes of looking. All right, left cylinder cylinder intake. I've got zero zero four and zero zero five. So here's zero zero four. Okay, and we're gonna do zero zero five. Yeah, I can't even force it in there. So we're gonna call that zero zero four. So, for reference, last year I measured at 005 on the intake, or at 004. So now on the exhaust, last year I measured 009. So here we've got 009. Can't get it in there, so here's 008. Fits. So, we'll call that one 008. All right verdicts in uh, I went back and double checked so this says with valve springs installed and it's got the little asterisk so these measurements are with valve springs and I also wrote down what they should be without the valve springs so what we got is I'm at 004 on the left intake and we're between 4 and 6 allowed so I'm on the tight side then on the exhaust, we're at 008, and we're allowed 7 to 9, so we're dead on on the exhaust. On the right side, last year I must have transposed or messed up the thing, but anyhow, I'm measuring 010 on the intake, and we're definitely out on it. That's my clatter. And then on the exhaust, we're at 8. Um, so last year didn't change much so basically what I'm seeing is within seven years we're losing a hundredth off of each measurement so definitely I got to do something with this in this intake and probably this intake too this is probably why it's hard starting it'll it'll get crank and there's too much compression and then you fi it'll finally kick over. So, yeah, I don't think I need to do anything with the exhaust, but I'm going to have to address the two intakes.